Well, here we are again. Yes, good evening. Um, welcome to uh, Tuesday night uh, on VaporTrials.tv. Uh, if you were watching just a couple of seconds ago, you'd have seen me saying all sorts of stuff already. Um, but uh, we're going to be looking at this in the second half, which is the Joytech Delta 6mm tri-coil bottom fed tank clearomizer type affair, which I have to say is really good. Um, but we'll have more about that uh, in the second half. Um, we've got some news stories. I've got a product recall to share with you as well. Uh, and then I mentioned that we're going to be looking at last year's Vapefest video in preparation for this year's festivities. Um, I was going to do this particular bit uh, the week before Vapefest on that show, but as you know from yesterday, and if you weren't watching yesterday, uh, this is going to be the last show that we put out until September. Um, so I was going to do the Vapefest kind of refresh uh, the week before Vapefest, but as it's going to be Vapefest in a few weeks, I thought we'll do it afterwards. So that'll be in the last half. Yeah. I've no idea how long this show is going to be, <laughs> but we'll get through it. Yes, indeed. Uh, and all that, my friends, all that is after we have some titles. It's Vaporscene. Vaporscene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e liquid And good evening. So I'll have a slurp of my drink there <laughs> as I'm drying up. Uh, yes, good evening. And welcome to Vapor Scene on Tuesday, the 8th of July. And I've got a slight echo. I'm just going to press that button. There we go. Uh, and now we shouldn't have an echo. <laughs> I was hearing something around my little studio here. Yes, it's Tuesday, the 8th of July. And it is the last Vapor Scene for a few weeks. In fact, the last Vapor Trolls TV show for a few weeks um, because we've got lots of things going on. Um, and as you know, we've had um, a few things going on that um, we've had to deal with and we'll continue to deal with over the next few weeks. Um, so we're going to uh, refresh our batteries, charge our batteries and come up with some new stuff as well. Uh, and I'll remind you about that towards the end of the show. Yeah. Um, and as I said uh, just then, we're going to be looking at the, uh, the Delta from Joytech, which I've been quite happily vaping on. Um, over the last week. Uh, in fact, I've had it for a few weeks, but um, because I've been sick, um, I, I didn't really vape much for over a week because I just couldn't, uh, because it was just so sore. Um, but there you go. So let's crack on with uh, what we've got for you today. And I'm going to start with a, a product recall that I saw earlier on on Facebook. Uh, and this came in from Suffolk Trading Standard um, Standards on their blog. Um, and uh, it's in relation to a Kangatech electronic cigarette kit. Now, what they're saying is that uh, electronic cigarette kit comprising of a lithium battery, a cartomizer stroke dispenser, and a USB battery charger sold loose without packaging or instructions. Hmm. Uh, and in brackets there, NB, this indicates that the, the items may be counterfeit. Yeah. It's a good possibility, I have to say. Um, now, apparently there is no cutoff on the charging function. So once the battery, the lithium battery has charged, uh, this could cause the device to overheat and explode or catch fire. And one incident has been reported thus far. Uh, if you have purchased either of the above e-cigarette kits, please discontinue using them and return it to the retailer for a full refund. Uh, and here is a close up. And you can see there, the bottom one, um, that kind of Kanga logo looks really, really moody. It, it doesn't look real at all. Um, so my guess is they could well be counterfeit, yes. Uh, and if they're going to explode when you charge them, it's not good. Uh, a cheap deal is not always a good deal. If you go to Vape Fest and you buy something cheap, or it's on offer, or if you get something cheap from a, a recognized vendor, because it's on sale, that's a cheap deal. If you get something 
from a market stall, for instance, or off uh, an auction site or whatever, um, that uh, purports to be what it is, but it's not, then obviously you could end up in strife. So uh, always better to spend the cash, in my opinion, when we're dealing with that kind of stuff. Apart from, you know, things like the, uh, the fake scrape, which you know, doesn't have battery, which is actually really running lovely, I have to say. More about that later, maybe. Um, yes, so that was the, the recall. Uh, I saw another one as well um, earlier on, but I didn't get a chance to screen grab it. So uh, keep an eye out on Twitter and Facebook um, for those coming up, because they come up quite often. Um, let's look at some news stories. I've got some, uh, some US ones here. Uh, Red Deer e-cigarette users are noved. It's actually annoyed by vaping ban. That's because I cut up and pasted it a little bit in the in paint shop earlier when I was making that slide. Yes, the city of Red Deer said last night that residents will no longer be able to vape e-cigarettes wherever they please after, after it determined an existing local bylaw definition of smoking applied to vaping as well. Hmm, really? The city council has banned the use of electronic cigarettes in public venues and that annoys some users of the new product. Absolutely ridiculous. They're completely not cigarettes, says Takara Grant. The 20 year old uh, says she smoked two to three packs of cigarettes a day before she discovered vaping, uh, which is what many users call the practice. She said Red Deer Council is behind the times. Yeah. Unlike tobacco, which contains noxious chemicals, e cigarettes produce a vapor that is composed mostly of water and nicotine. And Jeff Wright, a newcomer to the world of vaping, says he can understand Council's move to restrict their use. People may feel uncomfortable seeing someone vaporising vaporizing, in public, in a restaurant or in front of children, so I can understand why it happened, says Wingert. I can see the other side too, where people should uh, be able to enjoy something that doesn't harm others. Uh, and of course we're seeing this all over, aren't we? Um, where people are getting the wrong information and they're acting on it without getting the right information. Um, it's happening on lots of different states in the US now. I wonder how, it, how long it's going to be before it's practically banned everywhere uh, in the States. Um, that leads me on to another little story from the States, which is this one. Uh, this is from uh, Local 12 WKRC News. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> lawmakers urge FDA to make consumers more aware. I think that was. Uh, Washington. They smell and taste like candy, but the liquid nicotine in electronic cigarettes can be deadly for children and some adults. I could read the rest, but let's have a bit of video instead. Well, they smell and taste like candy, but can be deadly for children and some adults. We're talking about the liquid nicotine in e-cigarettes today. Dora Scheidel shows how one of Washington's most powerful lawmakers wants the FDA to do more to make sure we know about the danger. It's a store that only carries electronic cigarettes and the liquid that goes with it. And Unique Cigs says their product is changing lives. We've seen so many lives change for the positive, from switching from cigarettes to vaping, getting rid of the smoke and the tar and the ash and all of that. But health experts say it could also be endangering them. Last year, Upstate New York Poison Center received 20 calls with concerns about exposure to e-cig liquid. Just six months into this year, the number of calls has doubled, and almost all of the victims are children. For the most part, we've been lucky. We've had very few um, serious uh, problems. But problems do stem uh, all the way from just some nausea and vomiting, you know, all the way to sweating, shakiness, tremors, and then the end, uh, some of the most feared complications are things like seizures and convulsions. With tempting flavors like cherry and vanilla, kids think they're eating candy. Before e-cigarettes were on the market, we worried about the effect of secondhand smoke on our kids. Now we have a much greater worry. Now Senator Schumer is calling on the FDA to require all e-cig manufacturers to use child safety caps and print clear warning labels. Here at Unique Cigs in Liverpool, they're already implementing the policies that Senator Schumer is demanding. All of the liquid nicotine they sell has childproof caps and explicit warning labels. I would treat these nicotine products almost like how parents treat their medicines. Keep them in high outer reach places, perhaps in your medicine cabinets. If passed, new laws would hold these companies accountable. 
But until then, it's up to parents to keep the sweet-smelling liquids locked away from their kids. Reporting from Liverpool, I'm Dora Scheidel. Now, poisoning can result from liquid nicotine when swallowed, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin. The nicotine can cause nausea, vomiting, or seizures. So if you suspect nicotine poisoning, head straight to the emergency room. Yes, and I was just watching chat and scroll by there as that was playing out. <laughs> Disco days, you're entirely right. Um, you know, keep them out of the way of kids. Um, and yes, you might have a bottle of e-liquid that says strawberry on it. So you squeeze a lovely amount of strawberry e-juice into your mouth. And what does it taste like? It tastes like, oh, well, it tastes like this, doesn't it, Dave? This shite. Yeah, that's what it tastes like because it doesn't taste the strawberries. It tastes the strawberries when it vaporises. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Why can't they just get stuff right before they then start putting this out there? Um, yes, you can get all sorts of bad reactions from um, really strong nicotine, especially if it's um, completely undiluted and almost pure. We know that it's extremely dangerous in its pure form, um, but 36 milligram on your tongue? We've all seen Dave Dawn squeeze half a bottle into his mouth and, uh, and uh, swallow it down. He didn't die, he's still here. Yeah, he was on show last night. Yeah, he was. Um, so yes, the same old, same old, same old um, stuff. I'm not going to say the word that someone else said in chat. Um, oh, apparently Germany scored. <laughs> ah, the World Cup, it's killed us. Anyway, let's have one more American story, yeah. And then we'll go to some uh, Australian stuff, yeah. So, Hillsborough City Council, all these different places. We've had Liverpool in America, in New York. Now we've got Hillsborough City Council, uh, and it's not in Sheffield. Um, yes, finalises a ban on e-cigarettes in parks. In parks. They're now officially banned in Hillsborough parks. The county council voted 5 to 1 Tuesday evening on the second and final reading of an ordinance prohibiting the use of e-cigarettes on park property, which includes the home of the Hillsborough Hops, Ron Tonkin Field. Again, Councillor Fred Natchigal was the sole no vote. I'm not convinced that there are current viable health issues, um, the risk to bystanders. It is possibly uh, less than your standard barbecue, which we do allow in parks, he said but his peers on the council disagreed. I did a lot of research on American Lung Association's website. They have concerns not only about the liquids, but the lithium battery, said council president Aaron Carlson. Parks to me are supposed to promote health and well-being, she added. And while I do agree that the vapor mechanisms are making some people stop smoking, I'm still have found compelling information for it looking cool to kids. So the parks are there to promote health and well-being but they can take their trailer, their, their car or their truck or whatever, their RV to the park with a barbecue, fill it full of steak and sausage and whatever uh, and you know stuff themselves silly with all the meat and all the fatty meat and sausages and all that stuff and that's, uh, that's promoting health and well-being as well isn't it? Yeah, not. There were quite a few comments on this story um, from some Americans so I'd like to just show you those uh, without pity said, once again we have the gnarly tentacles of government reaching out to diminish liberty all on the battle cry of good intentions. E-cigarettes like their sisters in the tobacco industry are a legal product if used adults 18, of, uh, 18, 18 years of age or older. <laughs> Is tobacco use undeniably linked to health hazards? Of course. That being said, as an individual American we should have the freedom to make conscious decisions without the overseeing eye of an intrusive government. And Harrison Bergman said, uh, concerns about lithium battery, really? The city council rocket scientist realized that lithium batteries are in nearly every portable electronic device, right? And even in cars. And he also said, will it be legal to smoke pot in Hillsborough parks if a pot measure passes in November? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Maybe you can smoke pot in the parks if that goes through in November, but you can't use electronic cigarettes. Uh, and one final comment from a, uh, a local resident. Uh, West Turi Toe says, I hate cigarettes. I hate secondhand smoke. I am one of the biggest anti-smoking people I know. 
really. Uh, I watch cigarettes take several relatives away, but I don't have an issue with e-cigarettes. People do all sorts of things that are considered unhealthy, and generally my feeling is live and let live. If they aren't bothering me, what they do is their business. E-cigarettes don't stink, and people in the park aren't going to be blowing it in your face anyhow. The fact is that difficult for enforcement to distinguish an e-cigarette from a regular cigarette is just too damn bad. I know they would rather sit back and not do their job, but if people are willingly making themselves a target for a stop, why turn down the power? Maybe you'll hit on some outstanding warrants in the process. Concerns about lithium? Uh, WTF. It's in cell phones, electric cars, cordless phones and video game consoles. Is now really the appropriate time to develop lithium concerns? Can we ban everything else I encounter in the park that stinks? Patchouli, BO, excess perfume, barbecues. How about the diesel trucks used by park services and clean water? While it is really out of touch with reality. Some really good comments there by, um, by citizens. Um, you know, the parks are going to use um, petrol lawnmowers, aren't they? So they've got all the fumes, all the exhaust fumes from those. Um, and the barbecues, etc., etc. It's crazy. It's the same as Central Park. You can be in the middle of Central Park with no one around you. It could be midnight with no one around you, and you still can't use an electronic cigarette because it's banned in parks, in open spaces. Open spaces. You can kind of understand, you know, lifts or elevators. Um, you know, not using them in there because you're in the enclosed space. But if you're in a park, come on. <laughs> Craziness, craziness. Right, one last story. Uh, you remember Vince, Vince Van Herden uh, in Australia, who was being prosecuted by the uh, Australian government for selling e-cigs. Uh, well, this is an update that he put up on his uh, site a few days ago. It was actually uh, nine, no, it would have been 11 days ago now, maybe 10. Um, and he says, uh, sorry for the delay in updating. It's all been an incredible couple of weeks preparing for sentencing and dealing with the media, etc." As far as uh, you are aware, I was convicted, and I'm now a criminal record, making me the first person in the world to be able to say that. He's the first person to be prosecuted in this way. He was fined 1,750 uh, Australian dollars and cost to $14,000. First off, I still intend to appeal. I met with my legal team yesterday, uh, his uh, lawyer, QC, and an SC. The meeting was very productive and concluded that we do, in fact, have a solid angle to appeal on. I'm not going to go into detail of our legal thoughts as this is public page and there is no value in forewarning the prosecution. I also want to clarify the purpose of this appeal. The money that has been raised is not for my legal costs to date. It's not for the appeal to the Supreme Court or to pay my fine or the costs awarded to the prosecution. These costs will be, will be borne by me. I'm not sure where the money will come from but that is, that's an aside. Uh, the money that has been generated today is to fund the next stage, which is the Court of Appeals. The good news here is that everyone, is that my legal advice is that we do have a good case to appeal and can be won. The bad news is the next stage is going to be incredibly expensive. His lawyers advise it would be about 15,000 Australian, which is about 7,000 pounds, something like that. It's about two to one, I think. Uh, costs are around 35,000 and the QC had advised he'll support me on a pro bono basis. So he's going to do it for free. Um, so he still needs to find 50 grand, basically. <laughs> um, so he's looking at around about 50,000 GBP, 100,000 Australian dollars. Uh, he's not giving up, though. Uh, it's just time to get more creative. Uh, and the last bit he says, he's, he's almost finalised the trust account, and this should be done in the next couple of days. Once done, I will post the legal details in full for everyone to see. The basic gist of it is that any money donated that is not used in the legal battle will be offered to return refunded to the donors. And there's a huge thank you for all of you for your support and good wishes. I still believe we can prevail. So hold in there with me. The fight is not over. We can still prevail. Cheers, Vince. Yeah, so I'm going to keep an eye on, uh, on Vince and how he's doing um, over our little um, holiday period uh, and uh, try and get him back on the show um, in September to give us an update on how things are going uh, and then we can see what else the Australian governments do. Um, right, let's go to the ads. Uh, yeah, I've got another little, no, yeah, we'll go to the ads. I've got another little story but I'm, I might not do it. Um, but uh, we'll go to the ads but now and uh, when we come back we're going to be looking at the Delta. Oh yes, 
See you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Now it's back to Vaporscene on Vaportrails TV. Vaporscene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. And welcome back to part two. Yes, we're back in the room. Um, I'm just watching chat there, as I do, uh, as the ads going through. And Neil Rolf said something. He said, uh, if they ban farts, will that mean that Glanz has to keep his mouth shut? Well, Neil, if they ban farts, I'm going down for life. <laughs> uh, God, we've got the best chat in the world. Um, yes, it is, it is a crazy, a crazy situation. Uh, it really is. But, you know, the fight is going to continue. Um, we are going to keep going. The whole community is going to keep going and keep plugging away. And we'll get there. It's just taking time and taking energy. Um, but we've got lots of that, so it's all good. So let's move on uh, and have a look at this, which is the Delta tank. It's a tri-coil tank, um, and it is from... Um, Joytech. So I'll play some VT uh, and then um, we'll come back and I'll show you a little bit more. So uh, here it is. Enjoy. What I have for you this week is the Delta tank um, clearomizer from Joytech. It's not a one, not two, but three coils. Yeah, it's a tri coiled bottom coil clearomizer stroke tank. Uh, it's got a six milliliter capacity uh, and Joytech tell me that it can go up to six volts or 25.7 watts on the EVIC Supreme and obviously on other devices that go that high wattage wise. So uh, let's crack it open and see what we get in the box. As usual with Joytech, you get a little warranty card uh, and there's a little scratch label on there where you can scratch away the, the coating and then check the number on the Joytech website that tells you whether or not the uh, item you've got is genuine or not. Um, there's also some instructions as you can see just a small instruction leaflet uh, which tells you where, where everything is. Get rid of those. 
And finally, there's this. Now, this was in the box as well. I'm not sure this is going to go with every single unit or not. Um, but uh, I'll scan that and I'll show you exactly what that says down here somewhere or down down there somewhere. Yeah. Um, so moving on to the device itself. And there we have the Delta tank itself. Now it comes with one spare tricoil atomizer and then the unit itself. So let's pull that out. Um, it has the proprietary Joytech push-on mouthpiece. Uh, not too big. It's um, kind of plastic Delrin type material and it just pushes on to that connector in the top. And you'll see the connector in the top, if I hold it a little bit like that, you'll see it's slightly tapered. So you shouldn't get a collection of condensation in there uh, to uh, suck a buck up in the tube. Um, the other thing to mention is that you'll see here there's a ring and this is, let me zoom in for you, you'll see it a bit better. There you go. This ring here is a airflow adjusting ring and you can see it goes from all the way shut to all the way open in there, there and there. So basically you've got three lots. One, two, three. Yeah, you've got three lots of uh, airflow and they all change at the same time, obviously, because you're just spinning that ring round. Uh, they all change at the same time. So you can have it really tight or you can open it up and get plenty of airflow through there. Now the bottom is a 510 connection. The pin itself is not sprung, it's not spring loaded, so it's solid. Um, and it looks like it's pretty much leak free there. Yeah, um, but don't count your chickens. Now, let's open it up. Now, I've actually filled this already. Um, I've gone through the process already. So I'm just going to show you exactly what you get. Uh, and on the atomizer head here, it's a screw in, screw out change affair, like so. Um, you probably could, probably could, um, re-wick it. God knows how you would, um, being a triple coil. Um, but until one fails and I take it apart, I won't really know. Uh, and you can see there, quite a nice connector uh, and a little O-ring there to protect it from leakage. Just screws into the bottom section. Being careful not to cross-thread it, of course. Screw it in until it's nice and tight, which that now is. Um, and that, of course, screws in to the bottom of the tank unit. And you'll see there, if I just tilt it, it's got quite a cup inside. And that's obviously where part of the atomizer slots into when you put it together to stop it from leaking, etc. Um, it is a Pyrex tank and it has windows all the way around so you can see how much juice you've actually got in there. Uh, and as I said, it's a six mil capacity. Yeah, six mils. Um, so uh, fill it with some juice that you like. Now I've got four mils of juice in this syringe, uh, and this is one of mine. It's a uh, gingerbread. And I'm just going to squeeze that along the outside of the tube. And there we have four mils, and you can see the level where that juice has come up to. And if I just tilt it slightly without going over too much, there you go, you can see it in the window itself. So let's put this back together. Uh, I must mention as well that the atomizer is 1.4 ohms. That's what's on the outside of it. Uh, and also the one you get with it is a 1.4 ohm. So you get two 1.4 ohm tricoils. So there we go, that's now tight in there. Now because I've had this full of juice already, uh, there's no need to let it soak in. Um, they also recommend, I'm going to zoom out, they also recommend when you first use it, when you first fill it uh, and the, from dry, um, that you take 10 puffs at below 4 volts just to make sure that the wick is nice and wet uh, and that, that way you won't, uh, you won't kill the coil um, from vaping it on too high a temperature. 
uh, at first. So let's put it on the uh, Evic Supreme. And I'm a little bit annoyed because I've scratched my screen. <laughs> I had it in my pocket and I put my SVP in there at the same time uh, and uh, it scratched it. Now, the thing I need to say is you can see that gap. You can see light in between the two devices. Now this was designed, one of the reasons it was designed was to give a good tank to go with the Supreme. Now that is not a good fit. To me that should screw in nice and flush and I've got it as tight as I dare to go. I don't want to go any tighter than that because uh, what happens if you go too tight is you knacker the threads on the connector and also on the bottom of your tank. Uh, and if you do it too tight on the Evic Supreme, when you take off the device on you've got on the top, you take away the uh, the Joytech connector as well. So you need to take that off and then put it back on your Evic Supreme. But yeah, I'm a bit disappointed of the level of fit there. I have to say, I shouldn't be able to see any any air, any light between those two devices. So that's a bit of a disappointment, I have to say. Um, let me just turn it on, and it's telling me that it's 1.8 ohms. Now that's very strange because like I said, I've actually done this before uh, and it was showing me 1.6 ohms. Now it's telling me 1.8 ohms. So is it is it the coil or is it the Supreme? Don't know. Um, but I've also got it at nine watts currently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some, I'm going to take it up to 15 watts and it's just going up there now 14 15 uh, and with the Evic Supreme if you turn the ring three times quickly in the direction you want to go it will then carry on um, taking the voltage or wattage up or down until you turn the ring again so uh, I don't know if you did if you knew that or not but uh, three quick twists will uh, set it going and it will stop uh, when it gets to the end or stop when you tell it to stop. Um, so that is now telling me it is 5.19 volts at 15 watts and it's 1.8 ohms. And it produces quite nicely. I have to say, you heard a little bit of gurgling there and that airflow is about a third open so I'm just going to close it a little bit so you can see now how much air I've got going through there it's just that little section there on all three sides and you can see uh, if you're a cloud chaser that produces a rather nice amount of vapor now I'm just going to take it up to 25.7 watts which is what they say it can go up to and I can't get it to go up on its own now there we go right so it's counting up and it stopped at 20 okay so the EVIC has stopped itself at 20 watts uh, and at 6 volts um, so they do say it goes up to 6 volts or 25.7 watts. Um, so it has gone up to 6 volts, but it's only given me 20 watts. And I believe that's because it thinks it's 1.8 ohms and not 1.4 ohms. But let's see what we get. And um, we get plenty, plenty vapour from that at, uh, at that temperature and at that wattage. So that's the Joytech Delta triple coil, bottom coil, clear miser stroke tank uh, from Joytech on the Evic Supreme. Um, I'm going to keep using this until showtime and I will give you some more details um, obviously on the night uh, and prices etc. Uh, and I'll also be using this obviously until then and all of next week as I normally do with a new device. I'll use it the week after I've uh, done the video as well as some time beforehand. Um, so uh, it's back to me in the studio.
And it is indeed back to me in the studio. Hello. <laughs> now, I've got to explain something here, um, why it was filled the first time. I generally do my videos in one take. I just do one take and that's it. So that's what I did. I did the whole thing. I went through all my spiel, the whole thing. Uh, and then I took my SD card out of my camera, put it in my PC and realized I hadn't recorded a damn thing. <laughs> I hadn't pressed record. So after a small amount of swearing um, and um, emptying the device and cleaning it all up again and resetting, I did it again, which is what you just saw. <laughs> my brain's been a bit adult, I have to say. Um, so a couple of little things there. So it doesn't fit terribly well on the Evic Supreme. Uh, and that's because the 510 connection is a little bit longer than the old 510 connections have been. Um, and I won't take it off there for the minute. I'll, sh I'll show you it on the SVP in a minute because it fits perfectly on there. Um, but that's the reason why we're getting a kind of variance with the atomizer resistance. However, I do have it currently perfect. So it is on 1.4 ohms and 25.7 watts, which is what they say you can take it to. Yeah. Uh, and I have it full air. All the air holes are fully open. And that's probably going to cause havoc with my green screen. But it produces like you would not believe. Uh, and the flavour that comes out, I have to say, uh, I've actually filled it again. And this is a ginger and lemon juice, um, which I thought I'd, I'd have a go at. And it is very, very nice indeed. Let me just put it on the uh, SVP so you can see that it does fit flush on other devices. And we'll go back to close the Yuppie device cam. And there you go. You can see fits perfectly on there. Um, so it does seem to be a, uh, a longer 510 connection um, on the Evic Supreme. Um, but it's fine. This goes to 15 watts and it's fine on 15 watts. Um, but uh, 20 watts is very nice. Um, 25.7 is a bit high for me, I have to say, uh, with my um, throat the way it's been uh, over the past couple of weeks. Um, but it is um, a very nice little device. Mm. And it certainly kicks out um, plenty of vapour and plenty of flavour as well. Um, and you do have to do the bit that they recommend at the beginning with... <laughs> Too much paper. Uh, the bit of the beginning when you, we, you uh, take a few puffs, 10 puffs or so, um, sub 4 volt, um, just to get it going and wicking nicely. But after that, my goodness me, uh, and when you refill it, it's not a problem at all. Uh, now, I think it was a whip that said, does it take a standard drip tip? Well, yes and no. Um, you'll see the one that's on there is not the one that was in the video. That's one of my 510 connection drip tips. Um, and the one that comes with it is this one, which is, get it in shot, slight, it's very slightly bigger than 510, the Joytech one, um, but it's got a, a quite a large rubber um, ring in the middle, which helps it fit in. So some 510s will fit in and some won't, um, but uh, that this one that I've got on there does, uh, and some of the Gary Dibley ones as well fitted perfectly on it. So. It's a case of um, getting it and trying it, really. That's the thing. Um, yes, it is much nicer than the stock one. I mean, the stock one, when it's on, you know, it performs quite ad adequately. It doesn't look too bad on it. Um, but it's more aesthetically pleasing, if you like, to have the stainless steel one. But it works perfectly well. And I've just turned it off. Hmm. Yeah, works perfectly well. <laughs> yum yum. Um, but yes, I do prefer my um, my long stainless steel one. Yeah, looks much nicer, in my humble opinion. Um, let me show you some slides. This is from the Joytech website. Um, so it's um, three transparent juice windows, uh, the adjustable airflow, and a six mil capacity. Uh, and it's the uh, C3 atomizer head, 1.4 ohm, 
uh, and a range of 4 to 6 volts and 11.5 to 26, well 25.7 watts. Um, that's how it should look on the Evic Supreme. Um, and it comes in stainless steel, kind of brushed steel, or the black, which is rather nice to go with the, the black Evic. Uh, and the suggested prices are on the screen there. $40, 35 euros, uh, 4,000 yen, and 136 zlotys if you're in Poland. Um, whether or not that will be the prices that are actually out there when, um, when they're available in the shops, I do not know. But that's uh, the information I have so far. Yeah, so uh, I quite like it. I have to say, it's a nice tank. Uh, it helps if you've got a juice that you really like and you've got lots of it because it goes through it quite quickly. <laughs> um, but that's not a bad thing, really. Yeah, give it some good vapiness. Um, so, so that was the uh, the Delta from Joytech, and I'm going to be using that um, for some considerable time. And I believe Tim uh, has got one as well, and he really likes it as well. Um, so uh, yes, there you go. Right, that was that bit. Uh, now then, what time is it? 22, yeah. I've got a nine minute video and this is like last year's vape fest video because um, in a few weeks on the 2nd of August it is vape fest 2014 uh, and this time not in Tamworth um, but in the West Mid Agricultural Showground in Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury whichever way you want to pronounce it Shrewsbury um, this is the uh, UK vape fest Facebook page and of course you can go to www.ukvapefest.com and uh, check out the UK Vape Fest for Dummies page. You can see all the stuff that is going to be in the raffle, uh, and there's loads and loads of stuff this year. It's uh, exponentially getting a heck of a lot bigger, uh, and I'm planning to go, yeah, I'm still kind of, it's about 75% at the minute. I'm hoping to get there uh, and uh, see everybody and have a good day, um, but uh, jury's still out for other reasons for the moment. Um, so, this is what happened um, last year. Enjoy. Good afternoon. How are we? It's uh, about 10 to 5 uh, and it's a Friday the 16th of August and tomorrow it is Vape Fest 2013. <laughs> you can tell I'm excited, can't you? So, we are going to be heading off to the Tamworth Arms for the pre Vape Fest drinking session and uh, to make the room as vapey as possible. There will be quite a few people down there, as there normally is and as there was last year. And uh, we're staying there tonight and we're staying there tomorrow. So, uh, let's go! Thank you. 
<laughs> last in the queue. <laughs> last in the queue. Did you realise the person on the front end of the queue has been here since six o'clock? Ah, uh, that's the time I intended to get here. <laughs> it didn't happen though. What can I say? Right, Daz, this is how many bait fests for you? Uh, this is my third. Third bait fest. Third bait fest. You were here last year in exactly the same place. Exactly the same place <laughs> as last year. You've got to get your table. Um, so uh, I guess everyone needs to know, really, how you doing? How are you feeling these days? I'm doing good. I'm yeah? doing good. Yep. Had a bit of a uh, bit of a scare, but health scare, but I'm all right now. I'm on the mend. You're looking well. Thank you very much. You're looking better than you were at knees, to be fair. Yeah. So all these tablets they got me on now, I rattled when I walk there. <laughs> what happens when you get to our age, mate? Yeah. <laughs> Sandy Sutton. Look, it's Marco Van Basten <laughs> from VaporTrails.tv. <laughs> What can I say? It is now 12 o'clock. Uh, Rate first has been going now since uh, 10, uh, and people were actually queuing at 6 o'clock this morning. Yeah, that's right, 6 o'clock this morning in order to get in with the chance of getting some freebies. Uh, and we're going to go around the side and have a look at uh, what's going on with the rest, and it is very, very busy today.
So that was it. That was Vapefest 2013. It's now 27 and we're going for some lunch. Back to the studio. Yeah, I feel all nostalgic. <laughs> uh, it was a really good uh, couple of days last year. Yes, uh, there were just so many more people than in 2012 um, because obviously, you know, our hobby, our pastime, our love has got um, more and more followers now. Um, so this year, I expect it's going to be absolutely heaving um, on the uh, on the site in Shrewsbury. Um, however, it's a huge site, um, so there's going to be uh, plenty of space. Uh, and Disco Des tells me he's taking cider. Isn't that right, Disco Des? Yeah, because when I saw him in Bristol a few weeks ago, he was promising flagons of cider. Um, so, um, yes, I'd like you to just confirm that in chat, please, Des. Because <laughs> if, uh, if I do end up going, which is, you know, more than likely, um, I should be expecting some booze, yes. Um, there were thousands last year, uh, Rob. Yeah. Um, and, uh, oh, really, and don't get stressed about the size of this year. It's just going to be, it's going to be great. Whatever happens, it's going to be great. There's going to be lots of people uh, to meet uh, and drink with and vape with and exchange stuff. Uh, and there's going to be loads of freebies flying around. So if you're not, um, not terribly well in the pocket at the moment, um, you know, it's free to get in. Spend a couple of quid on uh, on a raffle ticket, you might win something, as I did last year. Uh, ended up with 50 bottles of juice and all sorts of stuff that kept me going for months. Um, so it's uh, it's well worth um, a punt on the raffle tickets, that is for sure. Uh, and of course, there'll be plenty of juice and all sorts of stuff flying around. Um, yes, come on, Des. I'm so oh yes, Des. Disco Des says yes. He's taking cider. <laughs> Because, uh, yes, I didn't get to drink a terrible um, uh, lot when I was uh, meeting with Des a few weeks ago because I was driving and I don't drink and drive. Um, but uh, I shall be carless if I go and walking from the town into the, uh, onto the site. So, um, yes, I will accept cider gladly and any other alcoholic beverage. Uh, <laughs> and it wasn't Michael J. Fox filming, it was me. Um, but, you know, when I'm walking, holding my camera, I do have a little um, kind of anti-shake thing, um, steady cam device. Um, I wasn't using it on that day because I had two microphones and all sorts of stuff with me. So I didn't have that particular device with me. Um, so it was a tad shaky walking up that line of people. Uh, and so many people that I've seen at other vape fests and at the knees meet um, all over the place. So it'd be good to catch up with them as well. Uh, and um, Gary, does want me to show the video, the uh, the Children in Need video that I did in 2012, but I can't show you that. So go onto the um, Vapefest webpage because there are some videos from last year and from 2012 on there as well. Uh, and the uh, Children in Need video um, is on there. The Perfect Day video that I did in 2012 is on there, as well as um, Dave Kitson's video that he did last year and the one from the year before. So uh, yes, it is going to be, uh, it's going to be epic. Yeah, it's going to be epic. So we're almost to the end. Uh, I've almost got to an hour. I'm surprised I have, I have to say, because <laughs> um, it's uh, been very quickly brought together at this show. Um, so I'd like to finish with just a, a couple of minutes from last night's Haze Hour. Uh, and this is what Dave said last night. Before we go any further, I've got to tell everybody this will be the last Hears Hour until September. Um, and the same applies to VT Talk. My schedule for the next three weeks is absolutely hectic. Um, and unfortunately, I'm just, we're just not going to be able to have time to put everything together and do the viewers justice. The team, as you know, is in, we're in a parlour state at the minute. 
um, and there's lots of things still hurting. So tonight, here's our tomorrow night, Mark o. Van Basten will be here with Vapocene and then that'll be it until September. We've had a, a quick parlay and we, we think it's best to do it that way so that we can get our heads together and come up with what should be, we hope, a really good series of programmes starting in September to take us through to Christmas and into next year. We need to have a good look at how it's all going to work and we want to do the best that we can for everybody out there that's watching. What we don't want to do is deliver crap. Um, so I'm sure you'll all understand it is what it is. We, we need to take this break um, and get everything back together. I will say this though. If anybody fancies being a presenter on vaportrails.tv, we want to hear from you. Let us know. We'll break you in gently. We did with Marco. We'll break you in as gently as we can. We'll give you all the help that we can. Um, but that's the way it stands for the moment. This will be the last year's hour until September. Um, and I hope that's going to be all right for everybody. It, uh, it is the way it is, but as DJ Reptile UK has said, advocacy is more important and my schedule between now and the beginning of August is, is absolutely hectic. I've got meetings all over the place and there's all kinds of stuff that we need to be doing, so there you go. Yes, so this is uh, the last show for a few weeks, um, well, about six weeks um, until September. Um, thank you all so much for the support and messages that you've been passing on to us over the, the last few weeks. Um, and uh, they've all been so gratefully received and we've had some really, some really nice comments about Mark um, on, on the different social media sites and I know his family have been moved as well um, by what was said. Um, we are going to come back in September bigger, better, stronger. And as Dave said, if you, if you out there think that uh, you'd like to be a presenter on vapertrails.tv, then get in touch. Uh, you can get to us on info at vapertrails.tv. You've got the Vapertrails TV forum. You've also got the Vapertrails TV Twitter and the Facebook page. So uh, get in contact with us and we can see, uh, see what happens. And hopefully we'll have some new blood in September and some new shows and we'll be able to bring you some wicked content week on week uh, and more days of the week as well. Um, so, yes, hopefully I will see um, some of you at Vapefest. Uh, and if not, I will see you all um, soon. Um, <laughs> well, I say soon, um, September. So until then, my friends, take care. And uh, thanks for watching as always. And we'll see you soon. Tati bye. is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. <laughs>